finalized, obviously. Um, so it's out of the way. Have a, a legal contract that actually outlines the ownership of you guys actually have in tier five and you know what our responsibilities are as tier five and so you guys get you know way that the, uh, the contract is important and stuff like that. But he should be here in just a couple minutes. I talked to him earlier today. Uh, I talked to him a few hours ago and had my conversation with him based on the feedback that we got from. Uh, based on the feedback that we got from everybody that that worked together and had feedback and went over the actual contract and looked at it and read the contract and had feedback on the contract, so those people had a had a video with their concerns. Uh, so we'll do that first once he gets here. Once John gets here, we'll do we'll do that first, and then after that. Uh, typically how these meetings work is I go over any of the questions that, that you guys had. And I'll probably just do that until John gets here. He may be running a little late. I just messaged him. Um, so until he actually gets here, I'll go over. I'll go over these questions that you guys had. John, John um, can you record it? I'm probably not going to be able to uh, cover the entire meeting uh, today yeah, so sure. that we actually... Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm, re I'm recording this one. Uh, so I, I am recording this one because it's got the legal stuff on it. Uh, hopefully, Joe, you'll be able to stay at least for John's part to, to be able, because I know you kind of led up and it was your it was your lawyer that, that led everything with, with the other partners as far as what your guys' concerns are and clarifications that you needed. So hopefully you'll be able to stay on for the, for the first part of everything and, and talk to Joe. Uh, so as soon as he gets here, I, I just messaged him a second ago. Um, so maybe he's actually here already. Maybe he's here already. Let's take a look. Yeah, he's here. Hey and, there, I'm here now. So he's here. So we'll we'll go over the chat, chat with John first, and then after that we'll release him and let him go because. Just keep in mind, guys, I, I got to pay him a lot of money for, for every minute that he's on this phone call. So whatever discussion that you want to have at the beginning, it should relate only to the limited partnership agreement. As it relates to John, he's, uh, he's the, the lawyer that's drafting up the agreement. He's not a tax accountant, so please don't ask him any tax questions or anything like that or, you know, just crazy questions. Okay, so can everybody hear me okay? I can, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Sounds good. Okay, and my apologies this time. I'm on my laptop, and I don't know, it's not picking up my camera for some reason, so I guess that's not, not turning on, but at least you guys can hear me. Um, as, far as, um, as far as these documents go, I just kind of wanted to go over um, some, some of the comments made by, I think it was uh, Joe's attorney, Jay Brown, and then I've got, you know, some notes regarding your discussion, and and things like that. So kind of just wanted to address some of the things. I know it seemed like you guys had some questions regarding some of the comments he made and um, we can either, I mean, I can either leave this discussion or we can just kind of go through questions. How, how do you prefer to do this? Um, Joe, do you, do you kind of want to, I've already talked, I've already talked to John. So do you kind of want to lead up? Everything? Well, what, what I would like to have happen is that you just go through and just address them. You know, okay. that, I know that, uh, from the perspective of me saying something, you know, I'm not an attorney. So um, the ultimate document I would just give to my attorney, but you know, if there is some clarity issues, I can certainly help uh, there, you know. And as I said uh, to my attorney as well, this is not supposed to be contentious. What I just want is that we have a good agreement that we can build this billion dollar company. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the goal. Um, that being said, yes, I, I mean, I don't feel like there's any contentions. The, um, the thing with this agreement, too, was, you know, I had sent it, when I sent it to John, you know, I kind of stated, hey, this is, this is a first draft, so I expect there to be a, a decent amount of changes, and I still hold true to that, you know, with this, with this working document, you know, don't take this as, hey, this is the end-all, be-all, you have to sign this right now. It is a work in progress, so you know, fully understand there will be changes. Um, and that being said, let's go ahead and, uh, and get into it. Um, for starters, um, I think the first 
couple uh, questions or comments by him that really needed to be addressed um, was section, I think it's 3.2 as I have my notes. Okay, so um, it looks like he was kind of saying that it looks like uh, the general partner doesn't have to contribute anything based on this. Um, I can clean up this language to make it me be more that um, I think the IP of the software is what is being contributed by the general partner. Um, so on board with that, you know, and this this is with respect. Sorry, this is with respect to the IP of the software that is being specifically built for the purpose of the partnership. Um, why you're there, why you're there, John? I would just like yeah. to clarify why you're there. Um, mm -hmm. I, I personally built five from the ground up. I started it. I work that. I've trained every single employee that works there. I pay all the bills. I've bought all the computers. I've dedicated three and a half years of my life. And I've delivered you guys seven actual software. So um, from my perspective, the general partner has contributed uh, the most to this partnership. From my perspective. And I completely agree with, agree with that. It's a shitload of stuff that you've contributed to it. Okay. So, um, yeah, like John said, he is, he is bringing a lot to the table. And, you know, so... I'll get that detailed in there. There was um, kind of the exception, you know, to make sure that's clear. This will be specifically for the purpose of, of IP of software that is specifically built for the purpose of the partnership. Or uh, exceptions to this may be the situation where, um, you know, if if a third party were to hire out the the partnership and say, "Hey, we want something specifically built for this application," uh, the the partnership builds it for them. You know, obviously you guys as limited partners um, or the partnership, sorry, the partnership wouldn't own the IP of that software because it's being specifically built for a third party client. You know, so just know that that's like an exception. Um, while we don't necessarily foresee that at this time, just know that that kind of language is going to be in there. So that way it, it'll kind of tie off those loose ends. So that way that kind of thing. Um, and to, to, clarify that, to clarify that for a second, um, there could be instances we, we want to we want to try to avoid it as as much as possible, obviously. But there could be instances where tier five working for a client and building a software for a client would actually be beneficial as a whole for the partnership. For example, we have a client right now that's one of my students. He also happens to be an inner circle partner, and he has hired us to build a software for him. And the software that he wants us to build him literally is almost it's about eighty percent of the software and Boxify that we wanna build for the tier five partnership, all right? So from our perspective, it, it, we would be stupid as fuck not to take him on, a, on as a client and let him pay us to build a software that then, that literally all the R&D is covered for and it's literally 80% of another software product so that we don't have to rebuild that and we only have essentially 20% changes to be able to go in and have another product for ourselves. So there could be instances like that where it makes sense for us to allow a client to, to enter into a client service re relationship with us, pay us to build a software because it actually coincides with what we want to do and it essentially outsources the entire R&D cost that we would have to bear ourselves. So in a situation like that, if we do enter, enter, enter into a situation like that, although like I said, we wanna steer away from it as much as possible, if it presents itself and it makes sense for the partnership for us to do that, we obviously cannot tell the, the limited partnership that they own the intellectual property of the software that one of our clients paid us to build, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think uh, that makes sense to me. I'm hopefully that makes sense to all the limited partners as well. Um, feel free to chirp in if you need more clarification on that. Okay, I'm going to do okay. the German way here. If I don't agree, I'm going to say yeah. something. If I agree, okay. I'm going to be quiet. Okay. Okay. Um, kind of moving on. I know one of the big thing um, that that it seemed like you guys had some discussion over um, within this agreement was this concept of, and I'll just, I'll just cut right to it. But this idea that if you know if you don't pay off your monthly dues, that you lose your interest. Uh, I know that this has been a hot topic of of discussion from the first time I was on the call, and then with you know the call that you guys had, Joe's attorney. Um, 
but this is something John and I have discussed. I mean, this is the model that John has presented from the beginning that, you know, you pay your subscription fees, um, you, you have your, your rights and your interest in the limited partnership for that month. Um, if you don't, then you lose it all. I know that there's been some talk of, hey, I don't agree with this or, or this or that, but that is the model John wants to move forward with. So that is our plan right now. I know there was some, um, some discussion over, and, and, and this is why in section seven of the agreement, I kind of use this term of a, of a lease. Um, we can change the, the verbiage how you guys want, but you know, it's essentially the same thing. You're subscribing for a month, you're leasing it for a month. Uh, however you want to, to word it, we, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable with that, but that is the way we're going forward with it is that we're doing a month to month basis. Um, if, if I would say if the large majority is not comfortable with that, uh, John has opened up the idea of, you know, we can go a different route where, you know, you, uh, I think Joe's attorney had mentioned maybe going the route of um, an initial buy-in. And what would happen is just John would set that initial buy-in price, you know, as, as a very high number instead of, you know, you instead of this monthly amount that you're paying, you know, 500 bucks a month or whatever, if you guys are willing to just go the large buy-in amount and throw in, you know, 250K or something like that, uh, we can go that route but this monthly subscription model is also intended that like while while it may seem you guys think that it may have a downside of hey i could lose my interest at any given time it also benefits that you're not having to put down a large chunk of money right off the bat um so i, I guess that the large majority of the limited partners would rather throw down a large chunk of money right off the bat we can discuss that um otherwise the plan is to stick with this month to month system set up um there was something else john had mentioned that the way we could do is you know i mean this is just a forecast so we can't be held to it right now but the idea is in about 24 months um ideally the limited partnership will be making enough in distributions or, or will be making enough that that your monthly distributions or, or whatever your quarterly distributions i forget how it's set up but your distributions for each limited partner will be enough to it'll it'll be in surplus of your um, your monthly subscription amount, and once it gets to that point, we would have it set up so that way it just automatically deducts from your distributions. So then you would have you wouldn't have to worry about keep making the payment every month or worry about this. Um, what if my you know credit card declines or that kind of thing, whatever that was mentioned in the previous call? Um, you know, obviously that's something you'd have to worry about for those first two years, but you know, ideally. As, as long as the partnership gets to the point where it's exceeding those distributions, um, exceeding your monthly costs. But once it gets to that point, you know, ideally you wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. So that's kind of the goal. I mean, obviously we can't make promises with that, but I will add language in there that, you know, and, and we do have it set up already with the language that if you miss an installment payment, the general partner shall draw that against your distributions to avoid delinquency. Um, I can modify that so that way it just becomes the default, not like not only in a missed payment, but just once we get to that point, everybody, this is how it'll go. Um, and so I can adjust the language to say that, but that's kind of where we're at. And I know I, I, I kind of expect some feedback on this topic just because this was discussed fairly extensively by everybody, you know, last call and then the call with Jay Brown, Joe's attorney. Um, so you know, if there, I, I, I kind of expect there might be some pushback, but uh, most likely this is the route we're going to go with is, is this month to month model. So I, I would like to say a couple things on that. There are already right now inside this agreement that's been presented to you. There are already three provisions that protect you. There is a there is a 40 day, a 45 day grace period. If you miss a payment, you have 45 days of grace to rectify your monthly contribution so that you don't actually lose your equity. That's one protection that you have. There's another protection that you have that you guys have even, that was even questioned and asked why we would do this. But there's another provision in the contract that allows a general partner to make special provisions for other limited partners so that if you miss your 45 if you miss your payment and you get outside of your 45 day delinquency and you know it's because your grandma died or you know you're in a plane wreck and you're unconscious that the general partner has the discretion to not kick you out and for you to not to for you to not lose your equity because of those types of circumstances the general partner has that ability to make that discretion for you and then the third clause which is what judges with with it which is what 
John just talked about, which is if you miss your payment, then what we're able to do is go in and actually charge that against your distributions so that whenever we pay you out distributions, before we pay you out distributions, we first get those missing payments from you that you didn't actually make. So those are three clauses in there that exist already for your protection. And we've talked about adding in a fourth clause, which basically states that, that once, once, our, once our, our revenue reaches the, reaches the point where the revenue distribution that we make to you surpasses or equals or surpasses your monthly contribution that you signed up to make to us, we will automatically deduct that monthly contribution for, for you so that you don't actually have to worry about making a payment anymore or missing those payments because you're not actually paying us anymore. We're just deducting that monthly contribution from the distribution that we're going to make to you. So we've mentioned that we have no problem adding that in if you guys want to add it in. That's perfect. I'm fine with the monthly uh, in my book for me. Um, I don't care to pay upfront a whole thing. So as long as those provisions are in there, I'll stick with the monthly, I'm good. Yeah, good I, with me. I think those are perfectly reasonable solutions. Great. Um, okay, glad to hear. I mean, <laughs> I guess I, ex I expect a little more um, just because I know this is kind of a contentious point um, in both conversations. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if the people are are on board with it that's kind of the plan we'll go with um so i think like like john's saying we do have several protections in there um at the same time you know it is up to you guys to decide if you guys feel like that is protection enough um now i will be adding this language that jay brown the attorney what he keeps uh what he had mentioned it was kind of having this fiduciary duty um that the, that the general partner um you know, John's LLC is required to have a fiduciary duty to the limited partnership um, to kind of, you know, add that extra layer of protection. Um, I'm we're, we're on board with that, so I'll be adding that in. Um, I did already have something like that, similar language that required that already, uh, because it came up in the last call saying, you know, hey, we have to, we want to add this thing where uh, John can only, you know, the general partner, he, he must act, you know, what's in the best interests of the partnership, not necessarily himself as an individual. Um, but, you know, Jay wanted added some extra language and I'm fine with that. We, we're going to do that. I'll get that added in. Um, so we'll go that route. Um, I, I know he had questioned something about like management fees. Um, you know, it's a, a good portion of this language, you know, this is kind of, Things like that are a little more generic in nature, like just to cover fees that may come up. Um, so I don't know, John, if you had any specific fees like within partnership expenses, if they want more specificity. Um, but I, I just kind of have the language of, you know, expenses for like these sort of things that come up. Um, but, you know, if there's, if, if, if we want more specificity in regarding to the expenses, um, we can also go that route. Um, I like to keep it a little, little broad. A lot of times when I'm drafting just so that way it does cover unforeseen things that come up. Um, but if you guys are not comfortable with that, that, you know, we can try to work with it. We, we had talked about that, John, and we had talked mm -hmm. about changing the language to make sure that it's clear that a hundred percent of the revenue that comes from partnership fees will go to the, the general manager to cover costs and expenses and then 100 percent right. of the revenue that's actually generated from the sales of softwares or the licensing of softwares or the sell of software engineering services is revenue that would be redistributed back out to the partners with the provision that with some type of provision that we would we would like the option to be able to take some of those revenues that come in from those from the sales of software or the licensings of software or the sales of software engineering services and then reinvest those back into marketing to make more revenue if necessary. 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. I do remember you saying that. Um, yeah. So if everybody, you know, if there's no pushback against that, that's kind of the, that's the route I'll go. Um, since that's what John and I talked about. I know there was also a concern about the, the tax language 2575 in there. Um, that was just the, the breakup 7525 of what I had initially thought, I guess the percentages of ownership will be. Um, I will change that language that way it is pro rata. So that's not going to be, that's not going to stay that way. Um, so that'll be, that'll be changed now that it's, I, I guess I was under the impression that it was going to be locked in at 7525, but um, that was just a, a misunderstanding on my side. So that will be fixed. That note. And as, uh, as John stated, I'm not a tax expert. So any questions on how that affects your taxes, you'll want to go to a CPA or someone else. Um, I know also in the call, there was some concerns over the, I guess, discretion and powers that the general partner would have. Um, for the most part, you know, we're going to keep it the way it is. Um, you know, we'll, we'll make that change. I know there's a big concern about the amendment language that he has discretion to amend the agreement. Um, you know, that's something I don't think, mistake, mistake uh, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I, I believe there, that wasn't a concern for you and we were gonna uh, modify that anyway. So that way it doesn't have to be under your discretion. It would be under the discretion of the majority vote. It was the plan we were gonna do. I think that's what we had said. We, we were going to for sure add in the fiduciary the, the fiduciary responsibilities that they re requested. I don't have any mm -hmm. problem at all that, that we either remove the ability to, to make amendments to the, the limited partnership agreement or that we put a provision that it has to be by essentially majority shareholder vote to be able to. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. Okay. And then also the power of attorney um, section, that's, that was the, the reason for that is so that way, um, you know, pretty much you guys are authorizing John to make any changes or, or file the initial certificate, uh, things like that. Um, anything filing with the state regarding the partnership, um, it, it's kind of intuitive that, that this would already be accepted. Uh, but at the same time, if you guys don't want that power of attorney in the contract, we'll get rid of it. That's not necessary. Uh, it's just kind of some boilerplate language to give the general partner the power to, uh, you know, make changes to the certificate. With the certificate being, you know, the filing with the state, just saying, you know, when you file it and say, you know, here's what the creation of the limited partnership and then ongoing things like if they change the name to it, change the registered agent, just basic uh, administrative type stuff. And that's all that power of attorney thing is really doing. Uh, but I'll get rid of that because that seemed to be something that one, I, th I think, you know, was kind of looked into a little bit harder than it really, I mean, it was, it was kind of like uh, the, the language behind it was analyzed way deeper than it was really intended. And we can, I can gladly pull it out if that just makes people comfortable. Um, it really isn't meant to give John any power besides just working with the, the state documents to make sure the thing exists validly and legally. But I mean, really, we don't need that in there. So we'll plan to get that out of there just to, I guess, um, ease any bad thoughts people might have had about it. Um, there was some discussion about the treatment of different limited partnerships. That is what, like John had mentioned earlier, that's, you know, gives them that discretion. If, if you know, something were to happen that's unforeseen uh, and you lose your interest, but he can get you guys back in there, that kind of thing. Um, we would like to leave that in there. But uh, if it's a really hotly contested provision, that's something we can reevaluate. Overall, as long as we're sticking with this subscription model, I think, uh, I think it's good to leave in there. Um, and that's kind of just where I'm at at this point. Could you just explain what that really means or what that is? The, the treatment of different uh limited partners is that what you're talking about yeah that, yeah i'm sorry that clause you were just talking about i i didn't understand what that really meant though okay so um let me find it again
Okay. So the language is there that the general partner will make decisions for the partnership that benefit the partnership as a whole. Okay, hang on now. Yeah. Yeah, that will make decisions for the partnership as a whole and not the general partner individually. Um, he made this note, hang on. He made the note as if it was going to give special treatment to limited partners. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Enter in agreements with one or more limited partners which provides such limited partners with such rights as the general partner in his sole and absolute discretion may determine the obligation, interest payments, minimum investment amounts, or expanded access to information. Um, so it includes those things, but it's also, you know, like with that limitation, he can enter into agreements with other limited partners to, to transact certain, you know, unique situations. So, um, for example, the thing John was talking about, let's say, you know, grandma dies and you have to go be in another country for a while. Uh, you don't have access really to your phone or your internet and you miss a payment and you are 45 days out and you, you're in there for 60 days or something, come back and realize, Hey, I, I'm, technically supposed to be kicked out of this thing um you know john has the discretion as the general partner to um have these agreements in place to like say okay we'll forego that you just have to back pay this uh this or that and and you know he has that discretion to keep you in it where you know you wouldn't necessarily otherwise be able to it also allows him to enter into contracts or agreements with other limited partners that he may not need with every single limited partner. So let's say, you know, one limited partner wants to do special work for the partnership and, you know, some sort of special arrangement that's unique from the other limited partners. It allows the general partner to um, sign on behalf of, you know, the, the limited partnership saying, you know, hey, this is this unique situation this guy's going to do. Um, but I can give a really good example. I can give a couple really good examples of that. We have talked, we've talked before about licensing agreements and, and just going after in the first phase instead of trying to, to spend a lot of money and efforts in marketing and selling our own software to go after licensing agreements with influencers that already exist and license out the software. And we've talked about having brokerages agreements for partners who go out and actually build that relationship and work out that licensing deal with that influencer for us. It allows us to be able to enter into that agreement with you. Let's say, for example, Joe and Kristen, you guys are, are really, really big into the HIPAA space. And uh, we know that if we take our softwares and we make them HIPAA compliant, that we can, we can demand a lot of money for those softwares because they're HIPAA compliant. It allows us to, to work with you together and, and form an agreement with you guys together based on your, your you know, huge, vast knowledge of HIPAA compliance and your connections that you actually have in the medical field. It allows us to be able to work with you guys and compensate you guys and actually enter into an agreement with you guys that we're not going to enter into with every other limited partner because they don't have connections in the, in the medical field. They don't have, you know, unique knowledge of HIPAA that we're actually going to need to go in and actually make those tools compliant to make a bunch of revenue to, to distribute out to everybody else. It allows us to be able to have the liberty to do stuff like that. All right. Thank you for the clarification. And yeah, I agree with that. That should be because each one of us has something that we may um, know about more than the other. And if it's something to help the partnership, John should be able to have that discretion to say, hey, I want to work out and do something specific. So thanks for clarifying that. Okay, well, um, that at a high level is kind of the summary of points that I know got brought up. And, uh, and so that's kind of my answers to a lot of those comments or questions that were brought up in previous phone calls and, you know, the one with Jay Brown and the previous one with me. Um, we will be making some changes to this document and we'll have a revised version out uh, in the future. But for now, I just kind of wanted to get these questions answered and you know address these things that that jay brought up in that call are there are there any other questions and concerns that you guys want to you guys want to address by what john's here i i did have a question i put it in there about 10 minutes before we um the the call started john and sorry it came in the last minute but my question really was that 
this is kind of like the master agreements between all of them. How do you decipher the difference between each partner based on what they're earning or what they're not earning? Is there going to be an amendment or is there going to be uh, something there, specific? There's a secondary document. It's called a subscription document. In that subscription document, it outlines your monthly contribution. It outlines uh, your minimum term that we have talked about and it outlines the amount of revenue, the amount of initial revenue shares that you get for that. There's another additional document, which is an additional revenue shares issuance document that you get for, you know, other activities, like whenever you bring in other, gen other partners and stuff like that. But that subscription document is essentially what outlines your, the revenue shares that you actually get, uh, the, your monthly contribution and what your lock-in period is, what that minimum term is. Perfect. Thank you for answering that, John. So any, any other questions and concerns that you guys would like to address with, with John here? I don't have anything else. Um, I had no concerns. I just had a few questions and you guys answered all of them today, especially this last one. So I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to John also for being on here. I really appreciate it. Yes, no problem. Not you, John. John the other John. <laughs> you want me to leave, Jim? <laughs> well, I see you almost every day anyways, so that's cool. <laughs> so anything else? Is there any other questions or concerns anybody would like to bring up um, while John's here or not? No, that's good. Uh, just looking forward to the revised document. Oh, everybody's good then? I'm going to go with the yes that everybody's good. Yeah, like I think it just just said, if people don't say anything, we'll just... Uh... So at this point, they don't have problems. So I think you're good. Then, I, if nobody else has anything, I, I think you're. I think you're good. You can. You can stay, John. If you want to stop billing me now, you can stay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks everybody for your time today. Uh, I'm gonna duck out, but um, you know, I'll, I'll be in touch with John, and we'll be working on this over time to get it to a point where we get a new version out to you guys uh, with some revisions and. Uh, we'll address all of Jay Brown's concerns. So, is there? Do, do you have like an estimated like an EPA and when you think that we could have another document for it for them to, re to to look over and hopefully finalize? Yeah, I would say um, by this time next week, I'll have incorporated these changes that we talked about today. Um, would be would be what I would expect. Cool. Appreciate it, man. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for your time. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. So I think that kind of answers all the questions that you guys had for this meeting. Joe, you just asked about the agreement and changes your attorney is making. So we just kind of we just kind of went over all those. Uh, Munir, you asked, could this be recorded, please? And the link to the recording sent out. Um, yes, I am recording that. Harlan, you asked question. Will text involved June release include the visual campaign builder? If you go over if you can go over new features specific to this June release. Um, <clears throat> it, it won't include a visual campaign builder. It will, can, it will include the visual IVR builder, but not the visual campaign builder. It's mostly just, uh, <clears throat> it's a, I can give you a whole list of new features. I can't do it right now because there's, a, there's a, a, quite a lot of them that, are, that have been released. Uh, the IVR builder being, being visual, Default numbers added in uh, for you, for the contacts. There's um, obviously a whole new design and new layout. We've added in uh, a bunch of different touch points, which is part of the actual design. I made a video actually earlier today um, inside this group. If you just check it out, I made a video right here and it kind of goes through just that itself, Harlan. It, it goes through the entire new design and shows you, and I talk about all the new little features that, that have been added. Not a, there's not gonna be like a whole lot of new features in this, you know, some minor stuff, some minor features that are, that are going to help your productivity. Um, obviously the plan levels, we've implemented all the actual plan levels so that you can put a user in on a basic plan and then have a path to upgrade them to a pro or an agency plan or whatever and have actual restrictions in the software based on that plan level. Uh, but other than that, we've tried not to add in a whole lot of features because what ends up happening is as we add features, we, have, we add them into the current platform first. And once we add them into the current platform, it just keeps delaying the design, getting, 
the new design getting launched because we literally have to do double work, add that feature in this platform, and then add it also in our new design platform. So we've literally just tried to you know, mimic every single feature that we have right now, plus with the design, um, with the new design, like I said, there are there are some new features that, that are coming in. A lot of them are just like analytics, being able to see how many calls and, and text messages incoming outgoing you had on any particular phone number during any particular time frame, if you want to do any type of reporting or anything like that for your clients. Um, so just that, and then once we launch that new design, then we'll, we have a whole list of new features that will be coming out once we that we'll start building as soon as we launch that new design. Uh, Naveen, you ask, would, so hopefully that answers your question, Harlan. I'm not sure if you're still here or not. Um, probably not. Oh, you are? You're yeah, right. no, no, I, I, it's good. I'll download it later and watch it later. Thanks. Uh, Naveen, you asked, would like to have the meetings recorded so that those who cannot attend watch it later. This one is actually being recorded. Um, I stopped recording the other meetings just because they weren't really productive. To be honest, you guys didn't really ask that many questions. But my junior partner group is much more is much more engaged and productive than your guys' group at, at, at the moment. You guys don't really actually ask any questions for the meetings. Um, and for the last like three or four meetings, you haven't been actually posting any questions whatsoever. Um, so I just haven't seen like, hey, there's no questions. So why would I record a meeting that no one asked any questions that we're just going to have, you know, general discussion about, you know, the mark of the beast or, or, you know, how cocaine ruined our lives or whatever we talk about when we're just doing general networking. Um, so for those reasons that haven't been recorded, um, Joe, you, you asked your question. I think we just answered it though. And you're, you're clear on that. Um, Glenn, you asked, can the agreement define what revenues will be shared, meaning our revenue share is based only on software shares, the profit of the company, or both? We have defined that several times. Um, so we don't, we don't really look at, in, in, in our model, we don't really look at, at profit because what ends up happening is the, the revenue that comes from partnership fees, those cover all, all our operating costs. So all the revenue that comes from the sale of our softwares or from licensing agreements or from software development services that we may sell, that's literally all, that's literally all processes. That's literally all the revenue that will end up, that will end up getting distributed. So hopefully that makes sense. The revenue that gets distributed, that is actually outlined in the agreement. The revenue that gets distributed is all the revenue from the sales of softwares or from licensing agreements with the softwares or from selling software engineering services. The, the partnership fees themselves, they don't get distributed at all because that's literally our working capital. So uh, that's all the questions you guys had. I'm not sure if you have any questions or discussion that, that you wanna have about that. If you do, then we'll go ahead and have those questions and discussions. If not, then we'll call the meeting over and then just basically move on to the second part of the meeting, which is just general networking and general discussion, whatever you guys wanna talk about. Hey, John, can you um, show everybody where, where the, show everybody the link to your uh, members area for all that training? Um, I found it like two weeks ago when it popped up somewhere. I forget, Harlan might have asked a question about it or something. And I want to tell everybody that it's got some really good information in there. Everybody should go in there, log in if you hadn't logged in yet. And, and watch those videos. Um, John's done some really good stuff in there. Um, there is one about Facebook ads. Uh, I think it was from Spencer's uh, thing that John picked up. It's outstanding, I watched it, and I'm gonna be doing Facebook ads pretty soon because there was some information in there that I didn't know about Facebook ads. And not that I'm a professional at it or anything, but um, it had some other information in there that could be very valuable. So, um, it has, uh, John hasn't put everything in there, but I can see some of the headlines and titles, Zapier information, uh, stuff like that. So for sure. And I'm at, I, I'm adding to it. So next week, I'm next week, I'm going to, uh, do this module for you guys, which I think could be really useful for you. Basically social selling on Facebook, how to make money from Facebook. Cause I think a lot of you guys are on Facebook. And from what I can tell, especially from a lot of you in a circle, people that are saying that, Hey, you know, you're not making any money or anything like that. That's understandable. But whenever I go look and see what you guys are doing on Facebook, I can see clearly that I, I can see clearly bluntly. Uh, thanks for me to make money. So, uh, 
So money doesn't just fall from the sky. People don't just, you know, flock out of bushes and say, hey, I'm going to come buy your fucking shit that I don't even know about. So if you got stuff to sell people and they don't know that you have to sell it and you're not trying to sell it, you're, you're not going to sell anything, right? So whenever you guys say, hey, you know, we're not making any money, you know, I'm, I'm still paying out of my pocket and stuff. And then I go look and see, okay, well, what are you actually doing on social media? And I see pictures of your kids or I see pictures of you eating at a restaurant uh, or I just see random posts, which is all fine. I'm not saying that you can't do that stuff, but I am saying that that stuff's not going to actually make you money. So you have to do something that's going to, and you don't have to, every post you make doesn't have to be about selling something, but you do have to do something to let people know um, what you have to offer and you know, try to sell, try to sell it to them for them to buy it. So I'm going to create this course and this module on social selling that basically just outlines, you know, all the different things that that I done to basically go from being unknown on Facebook to being able to actually fully fund our company on Facebook and sell all the different stuff that that I've sold on Facebook. I'll just outline to you guys, you know, what I've done and how that process has been. Um, and then, like I said, the rest of this stuff, text in bulk, I'm not doing text in bulk yet. I'm waiting for text in bulk and sticky reviews. Sticky reviews already has a full training series inside the software. So does text in bulk. I'm not doing them here yet because um, so does domain leads. This one is actually just on my YouTube channel. And I just have to put it in here. Um, Robo Contact has, soft, has training all inside the software as well. Uh, text in bulk and sticky reviews, I will do after we do the, the design update because that's coming really, really soon. Um, and then whenever I'll redo robo contact for you guys and I'll actually go in and, and spend a little bit of time and, and show you how I actually use robo contact because still whenever I go into robo contact and I see what you guys are doing, um, it's, it's really, it's really wrong. And I, I've said it several times and I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, whenever you guys are using robo contact and you guys are doing cold outreach, what I see that the average person is doing whenever you guys use robo contact is you're contacting somebody on cold outreach and you're giving them like three, four, five paragraphs of shit. You're putting images in your, in your emails. You're putting links in your emails. You're telling them about you and your services and what you do. And that's totally wrong. That's not going to work for you. What you're supposed to do with RoboContact, there's one thing only that you should do with RoboContact. And it is try to get a reply from somebody. That is it. That's the only thing you're trying to do. You're trying to get somebody to open up your email, click the respond button, the reply button, and send you an email back. That's the only thing that you're trying to do with that software. You're not trying to sell a service. You're not trying to tell them about your company and what you do and your prices. None of that shit. Uh, and that's not going to work for you. All you're trying to do is get them to open your, your email and then hit the reply button and respond back to you. And that's very, very simple to do. It's actually one of the simplest things in the world to do. All you do is you send them an email, a very quick email, you know, one sentence email, two sentence email, and you ask them a question that directly relates to a money making activity for them. That's it. You know, if they're a roofer and you're trying to find roofers because you're an expert in generating leads for roofers, you just send them an email and you're like, hey, do you guys also do commercial buildings? Or, you know, uh, do you guys do roof inspections? That you just send them something that relates. If it's a restaurant that you're going after, ask them, you know, hey, do you guys take table reservations? Hey, do you guys, do you guys have a way for me to order online? Hey, what, what time do you guys, are, are you guys open? You ask them a question that directly relates to something that, that they consider a money-making activity, and they're going to respond back to you. Like I mentioned, I made over $2 million using that software. A large chunk of our clients at Tier 5 that are software engineering firms came from using RoboContact and that cold outreach, either from the process that I followed that actually caused RoboContact to be built or from using the software itself. And trust me, not one time did I ever go look for software engineering, software engineering companies in, in Indianapolis, Indiana, and did I write a, a two paragraph or three paragraph or four paragraph email talking about, hey, I'm John, I'm an engineer, I have an engineering company, we have all these engineers, you know, you can hire our engineers, they cost this much for this much time and that much. Never did I ever do that. I looked and I saw, okay, I've got four engineers that are available. One knows WordPress, one knows Laravel Framework, one knows JavaScript. Um, and I would go to those companies and I would just write them an email like, hey, do you guys do WordPress projects? Hey, do you guys work on Laravel Framework? 
hey, do you guys build mobile applications? Why? Because they're going to open up that email, they're going to read it, and they're going to, when they read that message, it's going to relate directly to a money-making activity. They're going to be like, hey, this guy wants to know if we do WordPress projects. You know, he probably wants a WordPress project. Let's reply back to him. Then after that, after you get that reply, done with robo contact you're finished you're finished with robo contact after you get that reply now you move on to hopefully what you have defined and in, in clarity about which is you know your your relationship building and your your sales process that entire sales process you move on outside of robo contact after you get that reply so i'll go in and, and talk about that so that it's in there and then if you guys are like well i didn't know that i can just be like well it's in the videos so so what else? Any other questions? Any other things that you guys want to talk about while we're here? <coughs> Thanks, John. That was good. Yeah, no problem. Nope, I don't have any other questions. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Anybody else have any other questions or any other things that they want to talk about? Anybody? Guess not. Nobody's saying anything. It say sounds, something. It sounds like Somebody say something. If you guys don't have any talk, anything else you want to talk about, that's fine. I mean, there's no problem. We'll just go and we'll continue about the rest of our lives and the rest of our days. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the middle. I literally took a break. To, to, I'm building a game for my Oculus right now. So I'm in the middle of trying to build this game for my Oculus. And I'm trying to get it done by tonight so I can get all the controls on my Oculus working. So trust me, I'm very anxious and eager to go back to programming. So... John, what's the game? What's the game going to be about? What's give, give me a little heads up on it. I want a part of that game when I get my Oculus. This game is not about anything, Joe. This game is literally just about me <laughs> understanding how to interface with the, the Oculus and interface with the different controls in Oculus and how to port the different controls and the VR elements inside inside the game. So nothing really. It's literally just a is literally just a ball that you can roll around and pick up coins with. So, um, but it's just kind of like I said, it's just meant to figure out how to actually interface with the different controls of the Oculus and, and how the actual Oculus renders games and how the controls and the movements and stuff in the Oculus work. Nothing special yet, buddy. Cool. Anything else? Well, Any other questions? No, just waiting for my Oculus to show up. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All you guys just let you know, uh, the other Joe and myself won the, uh, if you saw John's post, we won the Oculus and I picked the Quest and I think Joe did too. So we're waiting for it to be delivered. And once we get it, I'm going to do an unboxing, show everybody what I won, John, from Tier 5 and John Vaughn. <laughs> it, it should be like two days from now. They said it was going to dispatch. They said it was going to dispatch on, I think, June the 2nd or June the, June the 3rd. So you should have it by Tuesday. Cool. Awesome. Anything else, guys, girls? I'm good. I'm uh, putting together a um, graduation party for my daughter for tomorrow. I'm working on it, so I got to go because I get back to hanging more lights and putting up tables and chairs and canopies and all that. So thanks, guys. Take care, and I'll talk to you. Have a great weekend. See ya. Well, if you guys don't have any other questions or concerns or things that you want to discuss, uh, if you need anything, you have groups that you can post in, you have access to me, you can send me a message, um, and I will see you guys next Friday, all right? So until then, if you need anything, just feel free to send me a message or post something in the group, all right? John, are you, are you going to still keep the pricing for the junior partnership is now changed to the um uh the one year price or the two whatever it was 297 a month is that right that's correct okay so that's now the the official pricing going forward is that correct that that's correct it doesn't reflect on the new funnels he built, that. He built those he built those funnels whenever we had the old pricing but yes that's correct okay now i just want to make sure uh, that i've got it right because i've I've got to resend out some emails because I had the old junior price in there at 97 a month. So I had to stop that and uh, now I need to 
um, put the new pricing out. Do you guys, do you guys have any other questions? Or you want to wait until I'm just about to leave and then ask me? Because <laughs> if you do, that's fine too. I don't have any problem with that. If you want to do that, that's fine. <laughs> Nothing else, you guys are good, everybody good. No more questions for me, have a nice weekend. Bye bye everybody. See ya. Thanks guys. <coughs> See you guys.